G'day, I'm Paul. So, Cherry, it's a Chinese brand. The last time they were in Australia, they weren't that great. <laughs> They're hoping to turn things around this time with some new SUVs. And fun fact that I learned, uh, Cherry is China's biggest exporter of cars. So there you go. Uh, this is called the Emota 5, and they're selling two specifications in Australia. This one here is the top spec EX version. It's priced at just under $33,000. If that's too expensive, the whole range kicks off at just under 30 grand, which is pretty compelling pricing. Uh, this competes with things like the Havel Jolion, the Kia Seltos, the Toyota Corolla Cross, that is the segment that it's in. Today we're going to do a detailed review of this car, so if you do want to skip ahead to other parts of this review, you can use the time codes on the screen, or if you're on YouTube, you can scroll down and use the chapters below, and if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. That way you're going to find out every single time we drive a revived brand to Australia. Okay, let's talk about exterior design. You've got seven external colours to pick from. All but green is going to set you back 500 bucks. In terms of the way that it looks here in person, it actually looks quite nice. It really is hard to fault. It's got a huge grille down the bottom here. You've got the Cherry logo there as well. Even further down the bottom, you've got a radar sensor there, and then these sort of chrome highlights throughout that section, plus a little camera nestles into there as well. Around the sides of the car as well, you're going to see these red highlights too. Over on this side, you have LED daytime running lights, and then the headlight cluster is down the bottom here. This is an LED headlight cluster as well. Around the side here, you've got a set of 18-inch alloy wheels. A little bit more red there as well. The top spec model gets these red brake calipers too. Wheel arch cladding there as well. The whole range is front wheel drive only. They do have other versions of Cherry SUVs coming down the track here, but the Moto 5 range is exclusively front wheel drive for the moment. Um, up the top here, more of that red highlight indicator built into the wing mirror with a piano black housing. Camera there as well. Yep, butter lights as well. And then more red down the bottom there too. Up the top here, you've got a sunroof, also a black colored roof there as well. Whip around to the back with me. Now around the back here, you have this sort of 3D setup on the tail light. So it's a full LED tail light. Down here, you have 230T. So this signifies turbo. 230 is the amount of torque that it makes. Up the top there, shark fin aerial, and then a dual tiered spoiler, which is pretty fancy. And then Sherry over here with a motor five down the bottom along with some faux carbon there and these um, fake exhaust outlets as well. So let me know what you reckon about the design. Do you think it looks good? Are you excited for this? Let me know in the comments section below. So we are inside the Emota 5. Let's start off with the key. So you have, uh, around the top here, you have unlock, boot, lock. You have a remote start function. Then on the back, you have the Cherry logo. It's a proximity sensing key, so you can leave that in your pocket. Once you're inside, you have a push button start just up the top here. Um, so interior design, it is a really pleasant looking interior. So for 30 odd thousand dollars, I think this is pretty nicely presented. Um, this looks very familiar. It looks the same as the Tesla Model 3 and Y in terms of the charging pad with that sort of Alcantara uh, trimming on it. Um, this stuff here, doesn't look all that great. I'm glad they didn't use piano black, but it sort of looks a little bit cheap there. Uh, but the screens look nice ahead of the driver there, and you have the driver monitoring system just here as well. In terms of the materials, they're all actually not too bad. It is a little scratchy down the bottom here, but for the most part, this all looks and feels sort of nice and premium enough for this kind of price tag, which I think is pretty good. In terms of the touch points, Nice and soft there, soft there as well. How soft are they? Well, we've got our durometer. We've tested the main surfaces in this cabin. If you want to see how this car compares to others that we've tested before, have a look at the link in the description below. Now, build quality. What is it like? <laughs> Actually, it all feels really nice and solid. Uh, our door slam test. It sounds really nice and solid as well. Now, let's talk infotainment system. So, Ahead of the driver, you have a 10.25 inch display, and then the infotainment is a 10.25 inch display as well. And this one is a touchscreen, whereas this one here is driven by the steering wheel. Now, it is an interesting system because a lot of these Chinese manufacturers, they now rely on smartphone mirroring to get a lot of that functionality working. And that means that they don't have to do a great deal to make the actual infotainment system work all that well. But here, they've actually done a really good job. And when you compare some of the Chinese brands to some of the more established brands, these infotainment systems are just really good. They're just nice and snappy and quick. There's no unnecessary functionality here. It just does everything you need it to do. And then you just rely on your smartphone mirroring to do the rest. So from that perspective, it is actually really good. You have your manual built into there as well, plus the ability to stream video and also pictures when you plug in a USB device. 
Now, I do like this function. So this is a voice recognition system. Some of the stuff that it can do and the way that it recognizes your voice is actually really impressive. So I'll give you an example here. Open all the windows. All right, open. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, then what you could do is, I don't know, like switch on climate control. I'm listening. Turn on the air conditioning. Got it. Turning on AC. Like it is a really clever system and it works really well, um, especially when you consider that, I guess, where they sell this car in China, you're not going to be talking to it in English. So it recognizes my voice really well. So really impressed with that functionality there. I'll put all these windows back up. I'm listening. Close all the windows. All right, closed. Now on the radio front, you have an eight speaker Sony branded sound system. The sound system isn't too bad, but there is a slight issue though with the sound system. So watch this. If I uh, turn the audio up, sort of working okay. And then I plug the phone in and then it just stops working entirely. So it seems to be like you can't have smartphone mirroring running while you have FM radio running as well. So yeah, a bit of a flaw there, but um, hopefully it's something they can work out. Um, this is what Android Auto looks like. So big full screen integration there. Android Auto is available both wired and wireless. And it's nice and uh, snappy there as well without too many dramas. I'll show you what Apple CarPlay looks like. Same story again, it's available wireless and wired. It's a little bit laggy here compared to Android Auto, though it's sort of a little slow to react there. And that's with the phone hooked up using a cable. So yeah, probably a little bit of work to be done here with the infotainment system. Screen ahead of the driver is pretty nice and clear and we'll have a bit of a play with that when we do go for a, a drive later on. Now let's talk about safety technology. So this car has a five-star Euro NCAP safety rating. You have autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian detection. This mirror here is really odd. Um, it's kind of, it's got a bit of curvature to it. So everything looks I don't know, closer or something than it actually is. So it is curious. It's, it's not an issue, but just something a little different to point out. Uh, you have a lane departure warning with a lane keeping assistant. You have radar cruise control. We'll test the semi-autonomous steering function a little bit later on. You have a blind spot monitor built into the wing mirror. You have front and rear parking sensors and a 360 camera. You also have rear cross traffic alert as well. But let's have a look at what the camera looks like. So there it is there. Quality of that is actually really good. So that's looking out the front. A wide angle view out the front, looking out the rear, you can clearly see the writing there. 3D view is pretty straightforward, a little weird around the back there, but uh, it's a pretty straightforward view. And you can select different camera angles as well, and then zoom in on the ones that you're after. It's actually really not a bad setup at all, so that's quite impressive. And this is what the horn sounds like. Okay, moving on to practicality, and we'll start off with your connectivity. So you have these two enormous wireless phone chargers up the top here. Down here on this storage tray, you have a USB-A and a USB-C port. The USB-A is for smartphone mirroring, USB-C is just for charging. You have a 12 volt outlet around on my side. You also have a USB outlet up the top here for a dash cam. What about storing your things? So your phone can kind of just live in here if you want, or on the wireless charging pads. Coffee cup. So it will get delittered in there. Unfortunately, it sits quite low, so it's not designed for little coffee cups. But in terms of bottle, it fits in there without any dramas. Teeth in there as well to hold it in place. Try a bottle inside the door. It fits in there perfectly as well. Set a console. Now, this thing is not only air conditioned, but it is enormous. It goes sort of all the way under there. You also have this big storage area down the bottom there as well, which I really like. And then a glove box here as well, which is generously sized also. Now in terms of comfort, you have dual zone automatic climate control with heated seats here for the front row. You also have a heated steering wheel as well. In terms of the seats and the comfort, so the seats look really cool. So they are perforated and the design itself is actually really quite nice. Seat adjustment comes in the form of electric for the driver and also the passenger. So you can go forwards, backwards. Your backrest can go forwards and backwards. You can lift the back of the seat. Unfortunately, you can't lift the front. And I found with a couple of the other Chinese vehicles I've driven before that that's a bit of a problem because you feel like you're sloping down. So we'll see how that works when we do go for a drive. On the steering front, you have both tilt and reach adjustments. And on our reach test, all of this stuff is easy to reach while you're driving. Okay, second row, what's it like here? Um, we'll start off with room. So knee room's okay. It's sort of not too bad. My seat is quite far back. Toe room isn't very good because you've got like this 
foot area here, but then it, it narrows a lot and you kind of have to squeeze your toes into there. Headroom is not too bad. Uh, in terms of your creature comforts back here, you've got air vents, a single USB A port, mat pockets in there. Not too bad. Um, ISO fix points on the two outboard seats with three top tether points. Center armrest here with two cup holders, rubber teeth in there to hold it in place. Bottle can also go inside the door as well. Now, windows, let's have a look here. So auto up and down. Huh, they go all the way down as well. Very impressive. Now let's talk cargo space. So you've got a powered tailgate. You just push this button here, that cracks open. Once that does open, now it is a little bit confusing because they've quoted two size figures here. So a little under 300 litres and then around 350 litres. I think that is this space here and then the bigger number is the maximum space including this area under the cargo floor. Beneath this section, you have a space saver spare tyre, 12 volt outlet off to the side, little light over there as well. I'll show you what it looks like with our bags in there. So laptop bag and then we'll suitcase in. Now I'm wondering if that will close. Give that a shot, the ultimate test. Let's see what happens here. No, not quite. Okay, so your suitcase has to go in the other way around, but um, gives you a bit of an idea of how much size there is there. And now we don't have a figure for the expanded space, but if you do want to expand the space a little bit, you can drop your second row out of the way and that creates pretty much a flat load floor. Okay, so we've just hit the road in the Omoda 5. So powering this is a 1.5 litre turbocharged four-cylinder petrol engine. It's made it to a continuously variable transmission, so there's no um, stepped gears in effect. With a lot of CVTs, you do actually have uh, paddle shifters on the steering wheel that allow you to, to grab a preset gear, but um, this doesn't have any of that, so it just waits for driver input to actually achieve what it needs to achieve. It produces 115 kilowatts of power and 230 newton meters of torque. Doesn't sound like a great deal, but you've got to consider that this doesn't weigh much at all. I think it's around that 13, 1400 kilo mark. So it's not really a great deal of weight to be working with. And as a result of that, it doesn't feel all that slow. So how does all that feel behind the wheel? Let's give it a little punch here. It actually pushes you back into the seat really nicely. And like I said, that weight really helps it sort of get up and move because it's not a huge amount of weight to move and then 230 newton meters with a turbocharged engine is uh, more than enough to get things happening now fuel economy so uh, cherry claims a combined average of just under seven liters per 100 k's we are currently sitting on 10.1 so yeah not not amazing that's included a fair chunk of highway driving as well so mm, yeah look that, that is probably a little bit high Obviously it is a turbocharged petrol engine that will chew through a little bit of fuel, but yeah, not entirely thrilled with that fuel economy. Hopefully it gets better over time with a little bit more highway driving. Now, one thing I'm noticing here is the steering. It is incredibly light. There isn't a great deal of feel through it either. So in and around the city, that's not the end of the world because it means it's sort of easy to park. The slow speed maneuvers are fine, but here while you're driving, there's just not a huge amount of feel there. So. I think they could probably do a little bit more work on just getting getting that steering feel into it so you actually know what's happening with the front wheels when you do have a steering input. Let's talk about the ride. So the ride's really interesting. In and around the city, it is very nice and soft. And what we find with a lot of these Chinese market cars is they are built for comfort. So they're not really built for handling and performance. And this is one of those. So in and around the city, it feels nice and comfortable and sort of nothing too surprising. But let's dial up a bit of speed here to 130 kilometers an hour, which is, our highest speed limit in Australia. It's also the speed you're likely to hit if you do any overtaking in the country and as you get out of the, the city confines. So there's 130 there. Wow. That is terrible. Yeah, so that's really not very good. So um, yeah, the body control there is not great and that comes as a result of the ride being far too soft. So when it is that soft and you hit those continuous undulations, really bucks you about and it holds it very high up the top. Like I said, it is pretty common with the Chinese market cars to do that, unfortunately, but uh, I guess it is what it is. Now, what about our bumpy road test? So this simulates a dodgy country road here in Australia. We'll dial up 90 k's an hour. We'll plow over some of this stuff to see what it feels like. Yeah, look, it, it is interesting. The, the, the ride is very soft, which helps with comfort, but there just isn't the body control you'd expect, especially here on these 
close sine waves. The suspension just doesn't have time to settle. And even on these bumps here, if you do have any steering inputs, it kind of is just all over the place. It's not really very well settled. So it is comfortable, but it just lacks the body control and that fine a bit of tuning you get when you do actually uh, get the car tuned for local roads as opposed to having a, a one size fits all ride and handling tune. Okay, you've got two drive modes, Eco and Sport. If we hit the Sport button, throttle becomes more responsive, the steering is heavier. Go for a fang around our track here and see how all this feels. Look, um, I will preface this by saying, obviously, you're not going to be driving your car like this uh, every day of the week, but we bench test all the cars back to back in the exact same way, and that includes a spirited drive around our ride and handling circuit. And look, it's actually not that bad. There still isn't a great deal of feel through the steering wheel. But even though it has a sort of fair degree of body roll with that softer suspension, it is pretty predictable in terms of what it's doing and it has enough road holding. I thought those tyres might be the limiting factor here, but they sort of seem to be doing a pretty good job there. <laughs> Never heard of that brand, Gitty, Gitty Comfort, whatever they're called. So um, yeah, it's actually not too bad. So we've got our back straight here. I'll just roll onto the throttle. We'll see what it's like here for the mid range. Look, it is actually picking up speed not too badly there. Sort of nudging 141.50. Yeah, not too bad at all. Now let's talk visibility. So I can see clearly down the front of the car there, the wing mirrors are nice and big and visibility out the back is okay. It's weird, it's got that really strange uh, rear vision mirror that I can't really get my head around, but I can see clearly out the back there. And the camera's great as well, so when it comes to low speed parking maneuvers, it is all pretty straightforward. Now let's talk about road noise. Um, yeah, there is, I don't know, it's interesting. There is so much wind noise in here that it's hard to tell how much road noise is actually coming into the cabin. And that wind noise from the sunroof is really odd as well. It is just really barreling into here. So I think it's something they really need to sort out. Okay, time to test our lane support system. So I'm gonna get the speed up to 70 k's an hour. Once it's at 70 k's an hour, uh, which is a little bit hard to see because our GoPro's in the way there, there's 70. Um, you can see here the steering function is active and then also radar cruise control as well. And it's going to basically keep us within that lane and then steer on its own. And I'm going to test it in the three outer lanes. Uh, that all appears to be active at the moment. So I'm going to test it on the three outer lanes. Uh, here in the first lane, it's doing a great job. We're pretty much center in the lane there and it's all holding really nicely. We'll jump over to the next lane wait for the system to activate. There it is there, it's all running. You're meant to keep your hands on the steering wheel, but I'm just holding it lightly for the purpose of testing this system. And just a reminder, we're not testing how well the car banks. The banking simply requires the car to be adding more torque to the steering. And we do find that any car that does well here on the banked oval tends to do well out on real world conditions when you approach corners and stuff. So doing a great job here in the second lane. Let's try our steepest banked lane and we'll see whether it will perform up here as well. Wait for that to act. Wait for that to activate. It's a bit unsure of itself. It's coming on and off there. I'll just give it another chance here. No, it's not loving this. Uh, I think it's because I've got too much steering input and it's not allowing it to then activate. And as we get closer to that line, it thinks we're going to go past it. We'll just try a little bit higher here. Yeah, it's detecting the lanes, but it's then not activating our self-steering function. So yeah, look, it's a pass in lane one and two, but a fail here in the steepest banked lane, which means that out on the, on the roads, it's probably not going to cope as well with bends and, and stuff like that. So yeah, look, it did a commendable job in the other two lanes, but um, not quite as well there on the third lane. Okay, time to do a little bit of zero to 100. Um, I've got it in sport mode, but I can't figure out how to turn uh, traction control or stability control off. There's nothing here in the driver assistance settings. I might try talking to the lady here. I'll see what she says. I'm listening. Turn off stability control. Okay, canceled. Okay, it doesn't appear to have done anything. What's up? Turn off traction control. Sorry, 
Try me again. Turn off traction control. Once more, you can say things. No, that's not going to work. So um, I think I'll just stand on the throttle. If it gets any wheel slip, um, it is just what it is. Unfortunately, we can't switch it off by the look of it. So, oh, actually, if you do know how to switch it off, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, but we're going to do a 0 to 120, and then we'll capture our 80 to 120 acceleration results as well. And then we'll come back to do a little bit of braking in our reverse speed test. So here we go. Dial up some revs. Wheel slip there, but we'll stay in that. All the way through to 120. There's 100. And 120. We'll jump on the brakes here. And let's have a look at how we went. 0 to 100 kilometres an hour took 9.24 seconds. And then 80 to 120 took 6.36 seconds. So that's actually not bad. So 80 to 120 actually had a fair bit of movement there. So that was pretty good. Now, let's go back and do a brake test and see how long it takes to stop from 100 k's an hour. Okay, time for our 100 to zero test. Let's dial up some speed here. And we'll just hit the anchors from 100 k's an hour. So there's 100 just there. Here we go. Okie dokie. Let's have a little sticky beak here. So 100 to zero took 2.88 seconds and 40.29 meters. So not the most amazing results in the world. So if you do want to see how this car compares to other cars that we've tested before, have a look at the link in the description below. We've only just started doing this, so we are building the database, but you'll be able to see how this car compares to other SUVs as well. Now it's time for our reverse acceleration test. Let's see how this goes. The throttle. Okay, so about 50 k's an hour. No, it's still picking up speed. Still going, still going. 60, 67, <laughs> 72 k's an hour. <laughs> Not a bad effort, Jerry. <laughs> So the Cherry Motor 5, look, it is significantly better than the last time Cherry tried selling cars in Australia. So that is a really big positive. So look, in terms of the other positives, the interior is really nicely presented. The tech is really good as well, aside from that small radio issue that we had. And I think that in terms of the space that you're getting compared to its competitors, it's actually pretty good. The one thing I did notice as well though, look at all of the standard equipment you have in this vehicle. It's $30,000 or thereabouts plus on-road costs. It just shows you how much margin there is in some of the other more expensive brands. And I know that this obviously hasn't been established in Australia uh, for long at all, but it does show you that you can still produce and buy a car with a lot of features without spending a great deal of money. In terms of the negatives, fuel economy wasn't fantastic. Dynamically, it's not very good as well. These are all things that they can work on over time. But when you look at the price that you're paying, seven year warranty, seven years of roadside assistance, um, and seven years of cap price servicing. It does seem like a pretty good deal to me. So let me know in the comments section below, are you going to buy one? What color and spec did you go for? I'm keen for your feedback. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure you like it and you share it with your mates. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. Till next time, goodbye. <laughs>